Hey folks, I'm Caleb Foshi with the Dust Bowl Catholic, and this is my Catholic dollar. All right, so we have made it to something that should be near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is retirement investing. Because we all know that unless the good Lord takes us early, we are going to have to retire someday. We all get old. Uh, we all, you know, can't keep working forever. Even though many of us will try, you know, especially if you're working at something that's very physically demanding, your, your body just will not be able to take it. So, just like when you see a storm coming, you prepare for it. Retirement is coming. It's time to repair for it prepare for it. So let's look at retirement investing through the lens of St. Teresa of Avila's interior castle, just like we've done all the other stuff. Here we go. We've now made it to the fifth mansion of the interior castle. And in this mansion, St. Teresa says that God increases as we, as we decrease. And there are new riches and delights to be found. On the My Catholic Dollar side, it says, Now safe and secure, we are going to save 10% for retirement so it can also be rich and delightful. So, the fifth mansion. Of course, many of us don't know because it's going to be very hard for any of us to get past the second mansion, I think. But if you reach the fifth mansion, because you personally become smaller, and God increases, of course there's going to be more riches and delights and things that we can't even think about that are going to make our lives that much better. So in the same vein, on retirement investing, we have to make sure we do all of our stuff as we should so that once we get to retirement, we're not worried about, you know, will there still be social security? Um, how much is the price of beans and rice this week? You know, we want to do our homework, do how we're supposed to do, so that when we get there, we've got enough to live and live comfortably, okay? And that's where the 10% comes in. But how do we know what we're supposed to do? So let's look at a couple of Bible verses that speak to this. Here we go. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 16, it says, In everything a prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. All right, so if you've been following our Instagram feed, be sure to check us out there at Dust Bowl Catholic. We've talked about this already in just in our little short videos every day. You know, we've got those people that are like, well, I'll just worry about retirement when I get there. Okay, when you get there, it's too late to worry about retirement because it's already there. Or, oh, I'll just, the lottery tickets are my retirement. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Don't buy lottery tickets. You, you have a better chance of being st struck by lightning multiple times in your life than to win the lottery. But what we've got to do is you've got to prepare. You can't just make light of it. All right. Even if you're only five years from retirement, you can do something about it. Okay. You know, if you've hit the other steps, you've got your budget in place, you've got your emergency fund in place, you've paid off everything but the house, you can make a big difference in how your retirement's going to be if you jump on it now. Okay. So let's look at another verse. A prudent man sees danger and hides himself. But the simple go on and suffer for it. All right, so I kind of talked about this earlier. You know, when a big storm's coming, say a hailstorm or tornado, we all know those people that actually go outside to look at it, endangering their lives. And then they're wondering why they, you know, got hit in the head with a hailstone. You know, it's one of those things where we see retirement coming. We must prepare for it. Okay, do not. Just say, oh, here it comes, it's coming, it's coming, and then it smacks you in the forehead. No, no, no. Do your, do your homework, get prepared. Retirement should be a great part of life. 
So as we talk about retirement, we have to ask the question, how much do I need? Okay, where do I start? But Proverbs also talks about that. Let's look at that one. Proverbs 27 verse 23 says, Know well the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds. Okay, again, where do we start? Take a good look at what you have. So back in the day, flocks of sheep or goats or cattle were basically a bank account. Okay, so you took stock of your flocks to see where you were in a, from a money point of view. So we do the same thing now. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start with your current salary, okay? And then try to project what it might be when you decide it's time to retire, okay? And let's factor in a few things. Will you pay your house off by then? Uh, will you keep working? Maybe not in a full capacity, but in a reduced capacity. That could provide some other supplemental income. And oh, by the way, it gives you something to do. How much do you currently have saved? Okay, so look at all that. And then I suggest going and looking at an online retirement calculator. If you Google the words best retirement calculator bank rate, it will take you to bankrate.com and a certain calculator they have set up there. So this is where you start, okay? Play with the calculator, put in different things. It asks you your age and when you plan to retire. That's another thing we have to talk about. When do you plan to retire, okay? 60, 62, 65, 67, maybe 70. Those are big numbers, especially if you're talking about Social Security. At 60, you're not eligible for Social Security. At 62, you are, but it's at a reduced rate. 65 gives you a little more, and 67 is your full secure Social Security retirement age at this point until you decide to go to 70. If you go to 70, your Social Security benefit actually increases dramatically, okay? And at that point, if you start taking your Social Security retirement then, you will actually receive more money, assuming you live till you're 85 or 90, you will actually receive more money in that shorter time than you do if you take it at 62. So that's things to think about. Play with that calculator, mess with things as you go, play with percentages, how much you're putting in. Um, don't forget to include any company match in that percentage as well, okay? So, let's look at another verse that a lot of people don't think about, okay? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 2, give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you know not what evil may happen on earth. This is talking about diversification, okay? We hear this stuff like this all the time. You know, you must you have a diversified portfolio, diversified, diversified, yeah, yeah, diversified. So what does that mean, okay? Basically, diversification means you're splitting your money into as many things as possible so that if one of those things takes a nosedive, the rest of them are still there to preserve you and your capital, okay? Now, the easiest way to, diver to diversify and the easiest way to keep your investing fees low is to use what's called an index fund, okay? And if you just Google index funds, you'll find all sorts of information on it. But in a nutshell, an index fund tracks those indexes that you hear when the financial folks start talking. So if you've ever heard of the S&P 500, that is an index that tracks the 500 largest companies in America. You can find an S&P 500 index fund to invest in. And so when you buy a share of that fund, it actually gives you a little sliver of all 500 of those companies in one place. So that if, say, Apple takes a nosedive, but Amazon goes up at the same time, you are protected in that way, rather than just having shares of Apple or just having shares of Amazon, okay? And there are different, uh, there are different indexes that you can buy, different, buy funds for. So the S&P 500, you can buy uh, a, a fund that tracks the entire U.S. stock market. 
Um, they are small cap funds, so small companies. They are international ones. Um, usually when we go international, we want to stick with, stick with the big international funds. So the ones that they're, they're usually called uh, developed markets or the EAFE fund, that's Europe, Asia, or Europe, Australia, and the Far East fund. And what those do is they'll track the bigger companies that you see overseas. So things like BMW or Honda or um, Jaguar, who, which is now owned by Tata, which is an Indian company. Very interesting. So that's what we're looking at. And then just to throw in an even more safeguard, I would, I would consider, I would ask that you consider an intermediate bond fund, a U.S. intermediate bond fund. Okay, bonds are basically loans that companies will take out, they will sell them to shareholders and say that we will pay you back, you lend us $1,000, we will pay you back that $1,000 with a certain amount of interest uh, attached to it. The reason why we want U.S. bonds is because, of course, US, the U.S. companies are the most stable, okay? The reason why we want intermediate bonds is they fluctuate less than the short term and long term. Okay, so if you've ever spent any time around investing culture, there's a book called The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. And its most latest edition has a lot of supplemental information in there from a, a well known money author that's more up to date. And so he takes Benjamin Graham's words, who was, he, Benjamin Graham was Warren Buffett's teacher, basically, okay? And so he says, you should take your money, and if you are not a person that likes to daily look at stocks and everything, use index funds, okay? And you'd go with around 50% in a total US stock market fund, around 25% in an international fund, large international fund, and around 25% in an intermediate U.S. bond fund. Now, depending on your risk aversion, you can change those percentages uh, and, and go forward from there. But let's look at some numbers I found on why it's important to diversify. Here we go. So, Again, diversification basically says don't put all your eggs in one basket. So we've got three different funds here. We have a total U.S. stock index, VTI. We have an EAFE index, which is the big international fund. So that's VEA. And then we have an intermediate U.S. bond fund, the bond index that we can look at. And so the middle column shows you the percentage of growth they've had over the last 10 to 15 years, depending on when these funds were started. And you can see they're all pretty phenomenal. Now, obviously, the stock market's been going up for the last 10 years, so we've got to just keep that in mind. It's, it's due for a correction, but if you look at the last column, that is the year to date. That is in 2019 alone, the way things have gone. So. You know, even though the total U.S. stock market index has gone up an average of 13.24% a year, this year alone it's gone down by over 5%. And this is where diversification comes in. Because if you look at the bottom line, which is a 50% U.S. fund, 25% of your money in the international fund, and 25% of your bond index fund, yes, the growth is a little bit lower. It's just over 10% which is actually the stock market average of the last 100 years. But the year-to-date loss is nowhere near what that 14% is, that negative 14%. So that's where diversification comes in. No, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna grow quite as fast as others, but you're also not gonna go down as quickly in the end as well. We've covered diversification. Now we need to talk about why 10%? Is that just a number I pulled out of the air? Not really. And, and there's some Bible stuff that backs it up. Here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. The point is this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully 
will also reap bountifully. All right, so that's pretty simple. If you only put in a little bit of money, you're not going to have much. You're also just going to have a little bit of money when you retire. If you put in a lot of money, then you will have a lot of money when you retire. You won't have to worry about things. So let's let's look at some numbers that I put together. I know this is a very number intensive uh, episode. But let's look at some numbers that I put together that compares things. Okay, here we go. So why 10%? The matching is icing on the cake, all right? So any match that you get from your company, don't ever count on that, okay? It is up to us to fund our retirement. If the company matches, that that's great, but we're gonna use a quote from St. Augustine when it comes to retirement investing. Pray as though everything depended on God, work as though everything depended on you, all right? That's how we're approaching retirement investing. So let's assume that you are normal and you make your household makes sixty thousand dollars a year. We'll assume that you uh, have twenty years to invest and that you're going to get that market average ten percent return. Okay, if you do ten percent, so over twenty years you invest one hundred twenty thousand dollars, you end up with almost three hundred seven thousand dollars at the end of the twenty years. If you reduce that by $1,200 a year to 8%, you only put in 96, which is only $24,000 less. But at the end of 20 years, you have over 70,000 or over $60,000 less, okay? That is huge. And that 24,000 less, you probably just spent it on something, you know? And when you get to retirement age, you're going to wish you had that $61,000 in the bank. All right, so we've hit quite a few things on this. We've done some number intensive stuff this week. Let's look at our homework. Just like usual, we are doing prayer and calling upon St. Therese. She is our patron. We're also still communicating with our spouse. We want them to be on, on track with us. You know, if they want to add to this in their own way, that's, that's great. So much the better. The more we have working on this, the better it gets. And then third, what you're going to do is you're going to talk to your HR office or you're going to open your own individual IRA and you're going to start socking away that 10%. Find you some good index funds. Do some reading, do some research on your own. Give me an email or a shout out. I will help you all I can, but I'm not a financial invest advisor. So my advice is free and usually you get what you pay for. I'm Caleb Foshi with the Dust Bowl Catholics, My Catholic Dollar. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment below on what you think you should do for retirement and how you should be investing. We'll see you next week, and until that time, be not afraid.